Okay, well here is my setup that I've made so that I could use my uh, ZWO planetary camera with a Nikon camera lens. This is a very old 200 millimeter lens. I can use it with other lenses as well. It's just a matter of getting the set up so that I can use a what I call a tube ring clamp. They're just designed for uh, telephoto lenses. I picked, I think both of these came from AliExpress. I bought this one quite a while ago and I picked this up recently. Picked up a couple of them. But I'll uh, take it apart and kind of show you what all pieces I bought. And also I made one little piece, pretty simple piece to uh, make it work out. So we'll take this stuff here apart and get it off of this other DIY item that I made a video on, the do-it-yourself DSLR adapter, which has, if you haven't already seen it, I don't have the guide scope on here now, but I can mount it on there. And then I've got these extra weights on the front and back just to help with balance. I like to try to make it a little tail heavy. So I'll get this off of this and then show you the rest of it. So I'm just using these pieces of all thread here are your standard one quarter inch by 20 thread. And then I use wing nuts and sometimes I've used washers underneath as spacers. These two here hit fairly level so I didn't uh, bother with it there but like when I'd use my Nikon D50 sometimes one of them might be an inch above the other. And uh, of course both of these here are just uh, simple uh, tubering type things and I've uh, I did this kind of handy handy here I made just a little used a little shim in here so this would tighten on better so this here is the piece that I 3d printed I'll uh, get it out of there so of course there's my camera And then uh, this adapter here, I bought this years ago. This is to take, so you can put a, uh, in this case, this is for a Nikon lens. You can get them for Canon or whatever. And on the other end, it's uh, what they referred to as C-mount which um, my old Malin cam used C-mount. And this here actually can too, but it's set up for, I believe it's M42. I'll double check. Matter of fact, yeah, it says on here, I don't know if it's in focus for you guys, but it says M42 to C. So the outer thread is M42. So it'll thread right into here. As a matter of fact, if you have one of these cameras that came with an all sky lens. It has something like that. I think it's got the M42 thread and then I believe they have a C-mount lens. Uh, I think ZWO actually makes one of these and they wanted at least whenever I saw them for sale they wanted a lot like it seems like it was 50 or 60 or 70 dollars. I got this thing cheap. I, think I bought it on AliExpress. I think I paid less than $10. I don't remember the exact amount. So then my C-mount piece here to a Nikon lens in this case. Threads in there. And then here's of course my old Nikon lens. I've got a since my narrow band filters were uh, 72 millimeter, this particular lens takes a 52 millimeter filter. So I picked up a 
52 to 72, I believe they call it a step up ring. And uh, that way I can put the 72 millimeter filter on here. And then when I'm using my 300 millimeter lens or my 400 millimeter lens, it takes the 72 millimeter filter anyway. And then of course, this is the same idea with the ring. And I just needed a shim in there. And I took whatever I had handy, which in this case was an old soft foam can cooler. And I managed to put a couple of those in there and said, hey, that's about right. And then uh, this is the piece I 3D printed. What I didn't want to do was put this on here and have it cover either my vents or, of course, my uh, cable connectors. So I needed it to go up this way. And initially I thought, well, maybe I can make a spacer that fits in between here and here. And it was possible, but the outer diameter of the camera body here, I believe, was 62 millimeters. And this inside diameter of this on this particular tube ring is 65 millimeters. And uh, there just wasn't hardly any room to work with. And then when I did a little reading on the specs of this, this piece here, this nose piece, it marked it as being uh, two inches in diameter. So I'm kind of intermediate at 3D printing. I printed this at my local library. And uh, ideally, it should have a notch opened up in it, you know, so that you can kind of clamp it in like this. But I couldn't figure out how to get the darn notch in there. I tried, but it never would do. But anyway, my hole that I made turned out to be about right. This fits on here snug. And um, I made this kind of narrow like a flat washer or whatever, and I decided to add these little uh, stand-ups or whatever you want to call them so that it would uh, fit in here. And it worked quite well. Now I've got this first try. I wanted this to be slightly less than 65 millimeters. And uh, I probably should have made it slightly more than 65. And if I figured out how to do the notch, which I could just cut it with a hacksaw or whatever, but I haven't done it. Since it's slightly smaller, I took this just a piece of Velcro stuff, really. And uh, just as a spacer. And that was enough to where I could tighten this down. And it worked pretty good. As a matter of fact, I took it out and set it up guiding with it. And my guiding has actually been better with this setup than it was with my telescopes and stuff. I personally think it's just because of uh, my uh, mount has the uh, Vixen type dovetail bar. And some people upgrade to one that is uh, Lozmondy. So instead of having like a three-quarter inch wide dovetail bar, or pretty wide, I don't know exactly how wide it is, it might be a couple of inches. So I think those secure your telescope and anything heavier than that easier. So I think since this and this camera was pretty light, I think it was happy with that. Maybe there was a tiny bit of motion with the other one. But anyway... I got this here, so that's really all there was to it. I just made this, and I was trying to just make use less material and make it less time to 3D print. So I put these little stand-up pieces here on there, and uh, that works out pretty nice. And I've been quite happy with the results using this. Uh, I plan to be able to use this with... Uh, different lenses. Let's see, I, this was the 200 millimeter and I uh, used it on uh, the Pelican Nebula picture that I 
took on my other video recently where I was testing out the hydrogen alpha and the uh, O3 oxygen 3 filter. See when I, that's another thing, when I use this, see normally you figure, like if I had this on my Nikon D50, I would come here and focus, I don't know if it's in focus on the camera, the video, but to my uh, infinity mark, and that was great with the HA filter, but with the O3 filter, I actually needed to be able to go past infinity. And with that 400 millimeter lens, just because of the generic design of it, it actually went past it. But when I put it on here, my focus point was actually here. It's a, the 10 meter mark near 30 feet. And then I would, I could focus there with no filter and tweak it just a little bit for hydrogen alpha and a little more for O3. So this was smaller pixels than uh, D50. And plus with a live view, I was able to really kind of tweak the focus. And of course this lens, it's not like going out and buying a, a, a nice little telescope. You know, it's not going to compete with a Red Cat 51 or anything like this. I mean, I got, this lens is I think it's over 60 years old. I forgot the actual manufacturer date. It might have been 64 or 1968 or something like that. And then my 300 millimeter one's not quite as old. I found a website where I could enter the serial numbers and they kind of estimated what year it was manufactured. So these things are old and I bought this thing dirt cheap. I got it for like $20 or something. So I've had fun with it and it actually works. You know, it's not definitely not perfect. But um, it's working out with this. Let's see, with my 135 millimeter lens, which I haven't tried yet in here, I'll have to just make another shim. So I'll just get the spacer in because it's a little smaller in diameter than this is. And then also uh, with it, I've got to get another one of these step up rings. I ordered one because. This uses a 52 millimeter filter, and I think that one used 55. So I ordered a 55 to 72 step up ring, and uh, that'll give me a field of view that's big enough to do things like the Andromeda Galaxy and the Pleiades. Will easily fit in there, and I've also got a 50 millimeter lens, and I was thinking that one would get all of the veil, all its big loop in there real easily. So sometime along I'll play with that. But anyway, I just wanted to kind of share what I'm uh, doing here. And if anyone's thinking about coming up with a way to use their ZWO camera or any other one, I guess, planetary, you can come up with adapters to hook them up with camera lenses if you happen to have some old camera lenses and you don't want to go buying a bunch of telescopes and all that. You're not worried about it being as good as the best of the best. Anyway, hopefully this helps you with some of it and I will end up posting this, how I, the uh, file and stuff on Thingiverse. I've made two or three items that I've posted on Thingiverse, but if anyone's interested, they can make them, and I'll have the file there, so if you want to alter it or anything like that, because I did it in a Open SCAD, which I think, for me, is a good one for beginners to learn with, and it's not too difficult to do simple stuff. So anyway, hopefully you liked this and got a little some, some use out of it.